And as soon as my front wheels caught that dirt that with that snow, it launched our truck mm. into the air. And I remember holding on to the steering wheel thinking, holy shit, we're going to roll. And it came, the, it came down on the, the driver's side cab, ripped my hands from the steering wheel, and I just turned to Brett, and I was like, Brett, I'm paralyzed. Real business, real business. Whatever your situation is currently is not your forever situation. That's really what real business owners is, man. Like, we don't care where you come from, yeah. where are you going? Our goal and our job is to reduce the mistakes that you have to make or the money that you have to lose. You want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be successful, don't give up. You learn, adjust, and continue to move forward. Welcome back to the Real Business Owners Podcast. This is episode 144 with myself, Trevor Cowley. As always, Kel Goodman. What's up? Guys, today we have a treat for you. This individual, I mean, we've been chopping it up with him for probably only 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it already feels like we're bros. Yeah, for sure. You know, no question. Like, you know, we, like we've known each other for 10 years, 15 <laughs> years, but he's still blowing our minds even in the 30 minutes <laughs> yeah. that he's been well, here. Well, I have so. known him for years. Yeah, oh, you have? Oh, oh, boys, bro. Our boys okay. played baseball oh, together. Okay. I've known Kale yeah. since. So, for, I shouldn't be the yeah. one even introducing you. Oh, okay. Kale, okay. introduce right. him. Bro, <laughs> yeah. you guys well, know hey, each other. Hey, our boys... Um, were lucky enough to play ball together, and at a very young age, they all played together. So it was like a cool core group of kids. So the man. kids they grew up yeah. playing. So we yeah. all like yeah. loved yeah. each yeah. other's yeah. kids, oh. man. Yeah. And so it's been a real treat having having your son around. And he said the same about my kid. But and then they went to rival schools. Yeah. They played yeah. they played club ball. Yeah. And they went to but it was yeah. so hard when we're yeah. at these Homies games. To right? Enemies, bro. <laughs> and and right. that's the thing is is we got them once or twice. I don't know if we got you twice, and then they got us. Like, was it three? Hey, times don't act like you over the two years because our. Like were, you don't know. Yeah. You know you marked that off. <laughs> they did. It's they took state one. Day. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But here, yeah. hold on. Kale's too much of a gentleman to bring this up. So I'll just bring the story up now. Okay. So my son was pitching this, uh, the the uh, turn the the uh, what championship game. Okay. And they lit him up, bro. 18. 18 runs they put up on him. 18 runs. Hey, everybody has a bad one. But <laughs> in, in the state championship, hey. though. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. The championship Ooh. game. Your whole life leads up to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 18 runs in up. the championship. But hey, they, hey did they, he keep his chin up, though? The year yeah. before, yeah. though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. year before, they, they beat us two times in a row, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, it, it was, was what it was. It was that but was payback. <laughs> so we double dipped them, but they, yeah. but then they ten run. The so. payback was nasty. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, so. but you know, in life though, mm. the the losses hurt more. Okay, I hate losing more than I've ever enjoyed winning, and I think that's because um, the sacrifice that goes into winning. Yeah. So you 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 put all this time and energy, hours. How many? I mean, years. We could probably put years into our kids putting them into ball. Still doing it with Cob with Cobster. Right? Oh my gosh! It's yeah, a see, it's a full time kids. side job, oh, man. It's a lot. If, if He's a side today. thing could be full time, yeah. it's being a supportive baseball, yeah. traveling oh my gosh, baseball bro. dad. It's a whole you know, other world. They think yeah. the cheerleading, uh, you know, girl thing is bad. Try to be a baseball dude, dad. Any I've club seen it sport, firsthand. any club sport is it. a pretty big commitment. But, but Kale's chill, dude. Kale's chill. Kale on he the can, on the diamond. Oh yeah. Unless he sees red like nuclear then maybe i bet i've never yeah. seen you nuclear. zero to a hundred mm -hmm. yeah he's That's not me. one of the chatty it's ones rare. It's i'm rare. i'm the i'm the type of guy that <laughs> i'm chatting the whole time <laughs> like i'm in the game like <laughs> yeah and if oh, yeah. something bad happens oh, yeah it was a call against me personally <laughs> and i'm gonna oh bro you're gonna hear about it yeah you're yeah, gonna hear that, about it that's my personality <laughs> i've always wanted to be a chill dad though and it's just not there. <laughs> let me tell you the story. Ooh. Here's well, the story. Well, let me story. tell you who you are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. See, so I told listen, you we're bros. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. guy, um, first of all, everybody loves him. Okay. Yeah. Like you go to the baseball field and you're just excited to see this guy. Um, but it seems Matt Blanchard, you guys, and Matt has been through more than anybody should have to go through. And he has built an amazing life. He's off inspiring children, speaking to schools. He's helping kids with mental illness. And, you know, he came from having a badass business. Like we were talking yeah. about, man, you were an electrician. You had a crew, Killing it. 20, 30 employees. Like you were doing awesome. Really and, well. And things happen. And like we were saying, you know, as cliche as it is to say life happens, you know, for you, not to you, you sometimes you got to go through some stuff to figure that out, right? Uh -huh. and, and if you don't believe that, it's only going to make it that much more difficult. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You have, yeah. To, you have to have a belief that whatever's happening currently is for the best, even if you don't see why yet. Yeah. Like, you don't have to understand 
what you're going through right now, but you're going through it for something greater. Yeah. You'll figure that one out later, right? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so, no question. Yeah. So, Matt, I want you to tell him. I, I'm excited to hear your story because when Caden told me, he said, hey, um, you should have Matt on your show. I said, yeah, have him reach out, man. I would love that because I don't even know your full story. I just yeah. know you from the ballpark and uh, all these years, and, like, I'm, I'm excited to you hear just, your story. You and saw share the bad with... side of him at the ballpark yelling at the <laughs> Well, here's the problem. He's an intense guy. Okay. He's an intense guy. <laughs> but everyone loves him. Is that him. true? I am. He's, he's, not, he's guy. not an angry guy. He's an intense guy, guy Okay, but, but here's the problem. So, so we're all boys, around. right? I thought you were trying to help me out. No, no, no. So, so, but I'm not on cheering on Dixie's side. Okay. Like, I am cheering for Dixie on Desert Hill's side. Okay. Right? I'm in the mid Because these are my boys. Like, we can cut some of this out, right? Because yeah. some of the Dixie people, like, they, I love Dixie. <laughs> I lo let me get, I love Dixie. Hey, you don't got to be <laughs> but, um, too direct. You yeah. don't got to call their last names <laughs> out and their great great grandparents but, but, out. Uh, all know? it needs to be said is we had uh, we had some uh, egos on that team. Yeah. We did well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had we had some egos on that team. You know, it's interesting that that, that the team didn't get along very well, mm. but they won. Yeah. And uh, I don't know that whether that's a tribute to Danny, the coach. And managing them because I mean we're talking fist fights at at practice, yeah, <laughs> daily. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Um, but you sure as hell will grow a lot if you're whooping ass at practice every. They're all hell of athletes, tough, dude. Yeah. Like I'm not kidding you, Caden, BB. I mean, all those kids Wait, went to college. college bro. They baseball. all had scholarships. Yeah. They all had yep. you know great yep. things going for yep. them. I mean, Sometimes. I don't know all the Dixie kids. I knew a couple. Um, but uh, I, str I so struggle sometimes kids. when like people like when you're saying that they were fighting all the time. I kind of like that a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's like everyone wants to be the biggest badass on the team. That was it. Therefore, everybody's trying to outdo everybody. That was it. Therefore, everybody's making everybody that Work much for greater. It. Yeah. That's right. It, like bro. if you want to be on, you better fucking fight to be on this team. Damn like, right. I kind of like that a little bit, but at the same time, I also believe like there's been dream teams kind of put together and, and there is the fray and some issues and they can't win the big one. Yeah. Right. Culture but, issues. Yeah. Some like, cause you have to be a band of brothers on a team ready to go to war together. Right. And if they're going to actual to war yeah. against each oh. other, that's a little bit different. So I would call this the exception to the rule because mm. nine out, nine out of 10 times, a team that isn't playing together doesn't win together. Right. But in this case, you found the unicorn, <laughs> the exception. And they and just all wanted to one up you know? on it. So, you know, we speak on, I speak on that too, is surrounding yourself with people who give you the best opportunity to be successful. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I come in here and see what you guys got going and yeah. just the energy. Yeah. The energy alone, just being on this floor, coming off the elevator. I'm like, and then I go in, hey, I'm looking for Kale. And then your boy, it's like, oh, yeah, great. Great crew you got going here. Great, oh, man. great energy, great atmosphere. I mean, the whole thing's dope, bro. Yeah. Thank you. The yeah. whole thing. I appreciate dope. that. We've That's worked cool. really hard. We love our people. You know, yeah. we we want to keep them all. And to be you honest know, with you, just, the only reason why we want to win together. Yeah, the only reason you know? why ah. it looks like the way that it looks. It was kind of it was designed like we built this out when we saw this. It was the third floor was just straight concrete. And one, one of the things that was most important to us is to have a massive, massive break room dead center of the entire office. Yeah. So that it's a place for people to come together and form, you know, a little bit deeper relationships, eat lunch together. Or if they didn't get lunch, it's fully stocked so that they can just eat and not have to worry about wow. food and, and wow. go hungry. Uh, wow. Or if they miss breakfast coming in, they can grab breakfast here or their coffee or whatever. And we purposely designed it like that so that we could create more of a, a culture of people coming together, right? You know, it's interesting you bring up the food thing, and I know I people pe do people get together and eat always. Dude, and that's how yeah. like a lot of relationships are formed mm -hmm. when you share and break bread with somebody. Right. That used to be a big thing. You invite somebody over back in the day to break bread with them. That's your olive branch to say, hey, like I let's I want to get to know you. Oh, right, and so that's how true. relationships were formed. So true. Uh, over Free food, any meal. you're gonna wrap out and you're gonna eat, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, you're either gonna like, hey, that ain't gonna happen again, or hey, yeah. when are we doing this again? Yeah, 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 no doubt. So let's 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 jump into your story outside it. of even baseball here. Um, <laughs> so you were operating a successful company. You know, you had 20, 30 people, I guess, yep. underneath you. Okay. Yep. So Kel, good intro, by the way. 
because it was detailed and yeah. you know. Oh yeah, um, well, I, and, it's easy. Matt's a stud. You <laughs> know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows everything about Matt except for Trevor. <laughs> so I guess I'm educated in the choir. It's so over funny, here, it's right? So, funny. <laughs> so, anywho, no, it's a, a, a super cool story. So let's go from the point where you're you're building and growing because I still want to keep it on business, and then okay. I want to convert to you know what happened for you, right? Okay. Yep. Um, let's talk about entrepreneurship in the early days for you in terms of being an electrician. So okay. you were what working for somebody apprenticing yep. and within a year or two years, you started your own thing or did you work under somebody five, 10 years and then do your own thing? Like let's talk about totally. your come up from employee to entrepreneur and then you building that business to the accident. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, it started how the electric uh, electrician or uh, the trades go, you go yeah. four years of school. Okay. And then after four years of school, you can get your journeyman license. And then two years after that, you, you test out for a master's license, which I did. So I did it just the four years and then boom. So all of that school though, then you, so you're taking those tests in school. Yep. Okay. Yep. So all and, through school. And my guess is you got to have a certain amount of hours yep. on the job. Yep. Stuff 2000 like that. a year. And then boom. And then you can take the te this test then. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So then, so I started working just doing houses at first and then kind of went to a commercial uh, with uh, Ride Alch Electric, and they're a, a uh, union company. And this is all in St. George? Oh, it's all in Salt Lake. Salt Lake, yep. okay. okay. So then I, I started doing the service department up there, and I, I, I mean, I'd go out and do my own billing, collect money for them, everything, and I thought, what the hell am I doing for this for them? Yeah. I'm making a pretty good wage. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, back in 95, 96, I was making 23 bucks an hour, which is good money back then. Yeah. And you could have said 13, dude, and you would have been a boss right, you right? Know, back then in them days. Bro, people it, listening right now it, don't it, even know. It's so crazy. Like, I remember at 18, and I made 60K that yeah. year, you know, but working my ass off. Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. And, you know, I was married with a kid because mm -hmm. that's what we, you know, when you're that young. When yet, you're in Utah, oh, bro. that's what you do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> settle down. Drinking the Kool-Aid yeah. is what I was doing. Settle Drink down the park. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> that's what I did. Have your Mul tree, multiply, multiply and replenish. Yeah. Took that yeah. to free. Yeah. There we go, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that's one, one, one chapter you took out of the yeah, old Yes, I book. did. Yes, I and, did. Uh, Practicing was good. Decided to... Uh, <laughs> Make it your uh, <laughs> memento of life. So mama yeah. stayed home, right? Yeah. Mama stayed home because yeah. uh, that's what... You were doing good, That's though. what the you females did, yeah. though. Like, like yeah. right before I got hurt, check yeah. it. Yeah. So mama stayed home. She did the Raised cooking, the cleaning. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't do that stuff. Yeah. And I did the the, the vehicles and the outside and brought in all the money because that's yeah. how I was raised. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, I decided to open my, start Titleist Electric in 2003. Mm -hmm. And things were good. I mean money was coming too easy i don't know if you guys remember that or not but it was too easy and um i, I still haven't hit that spot ever <laughs> bro so what do you mean if turning you remember that oh wait i'm still waiting for that turning money away was, turn away the easy and then money. just throwing stupid numbers at people and yeah. they have to take it kind of like now because you think you can't find the work yeah yeah oh my yeah, gosh. yeah. Ridiculous. You, you you basically you set your price of what you want to get yep. paid that week or that month yep. or whatever. Yep. Like, mm, I'll come out for this. <laughs> you know, the, Other the, than that, the, the one thing I did you do know? when I was young though is I ha I still have a vision board, you know, mm. and so uh, my goal is to be a millionaire by forty. Mm. Okay, now you got to. I was the first one in my family to ever go to college right. and yeah. do any of that, so that that was a big deal. And then I remember thirty two years old, two years after my accident, actually, I had a million cash in the bank. And I turned to my wife and I'm at like, at what age? At 32. So, it, it, and then I had my trucks and my houses. So, and I don't know what I was worth, but I yeah. remember I wanted to have a million dollars cash yeah. in the bank. Yeah. yeah. So 32 years old, I show my wife that and I turned to her and I'm like, babe, I don't know how we're going to do it though. Because I, I was hurt. I was going to China. I went to China and I uh, did stem cells. All I wanted to do was walk. Went over to New York, California, Texas. Uh, Europe. Oh, this was after your accident. After. Okay. After. And so, I, and I lost sight of my company. Yeah. And then you blow through a million bucks in a hurry. So let's yeah. go, let's go through this real quick. Yep. So you were 30, 31, 32. Yep. So wh where are you at right now? You're 32? I'm 40. No, I'm 46 uh, no, now. I'm, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. in your story. 32. It, so you're 32. At 30 is when I got hurt. 30. Okay. So start there. So at age 30, you're running the business. You're uh, running and gunning. Golden. Growing crews, bro. Thirty-one, still same thing. You're growing. Yep. Life's getting better and yep. better. Even from a chair, 
Okay. Yeah. Even from a chair. Okay. It, yep. So it happened when you were 31, the accident. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's let's talk about this situation where you work you were working down in St. George yep. on so, a job. So I had a division in Salt Lake. Okay. And I had a division in St. George. Okay. And we hadn't built bought a house down here yet. Okay. So I was just traveling back and forth. We like we were doing the standard plumbing. We were doing um, the crusher plant out here for Gilberts mm -hmm. and or by the Walmart distribution yeah. center. And we, we just had a lot of work. And so I just told my wife, buy a house. We, you got to buy a house. So she came down and found that house five months later, going up to Cedar City. And um, I was in the snow. I bought a brand new da Dodge truck, white, extended cab. Beautiful. So this is November, yeah. December, this January. This was January. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Yeah, so, so May snow. 5th. Yeah. May 5th. So 5505 Cinco de Mayo is when we moved in. 5505. Yeah. And then January 16th of 06, what, so yeah, seven months later, uh, cruising up to Cedar City Hospital, that's, and it had rain had turned to snow, mm -hmm. and my employee turned to me, and uh, I said, Matt, put your seatbelt on. And I'm that guy you don't tell what to do. You know? Yeah. And I don't know, I, you don't tell you what to do, I can tell. You, know, <laughs> you just don't tell you what to do. So I turned to Brett, and I'm like, yo, I'm driving, I'm cool, we're straight. Further up the canyon we go, and I'm following a semi-truck, and it's whiteout conditions, and now I'm arguing with myself, like, you need to put your seatbelt on. Yeah. But if you do, Brett wins. <laughs> Are you joking me? Brett wins. Yeah. And so um, at the New Harmony exit, mile marker 42, Stop that's when life changed, on. man. Jeez. So that semi-truck gets off the freeway, and Brett turns to me for a third time that morning. You know, and uh, not a still small voice, not a warm, funny feeling. Yeah. You know, somebody sitting right next to you telling you to protect yourself. And for the third time, I said, nope. So I get through that semi truck's tracks, and now I can't see where I-15 even starts or ends. And the back end starts fishtailing, and uh, the front end went in to, into the median between north and southbound traffic. And as soon as my front wheels caught that dirt that with that snow, it launched our truck mm. into the air. And I remember holding on to the steering wheel, thinking, "Holy shit, we're gonna roll!" And it came that came down on the the driver's side cab, ripped my hands from the steering wheel. And now it started throwing my body all through the cab. And uh, so when the truck stopped, it was on the passenger side. And I couldn't see anything. And uh, I realized that my, my hips were actually covering my face. So my, I, if, the, the, if you can picture it, the truck's on the passenger door. And my back's on the passenger door. Brett was back buckled in. And I reached up over my head, and I grabbed my knees, and I pulled them back down over Brett's lap. So now I'm sitting on Brett's lap, and I just turned to Brett, and I was like, Brett, I'm paralyzed. My phone was ringing, and it was on vibrate, and you could hear the ring. You could actually hear the vibrate. Mm. And like dead silence. And I, yeah, both of us were just, man, man. And he held me in that truck for two hours while emergency crews came down, and Use the jaws of life. I was going to say, yeah, that makes sense because it's just terrible conditions. It took a long time yeah. to get to yeah, us. Yeah, I didn't if you know, think about that. If you know our, our stretch here from southern Utah to northern Utah, there's a couple really bad spots. And yeah, right yeah, there, Black one. Ridge, one of them. And then just past Beaver is always yes. real bad. You know, and so, yeah, if you're in an accident, you're waiting for, for help for a for while. For a while. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's crazy. Well, it's just broken bone like so the, it wasn't bloody nothing worry in that way yep. you just got mangled yeah so what happened right. is my back went into the the um the uh steering wheel and instead of breaking me in half like a pencil it compressed me and that vertebrae all that pressure it just grenaded in my mm, back exploded exploded wow and a piece of that bone went into my spinal cord and thank goodness it wasn't like a it wasn't the sharp end or the it was a blunt end and it just yeah. went in Enough to take everything below the waist. Jeez. So, Matt, you were down and out for a little while, but uh, after what, after some recovery time, you were like, I got to get my business running still. Yes. So I, so I remember. So, so I'm sitting yeah, there in yeah, ICU. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so they, they life flight me, and I'm in ICU, and all I want to do is sit up. That's all I want to do because I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I don't yeah. want to sit up, and, and I can't sit up. And I'm looking down, and I'm thinking I'm still strapped to that gurney. You know, because they strap you on your chest and your head yeah, and yeah, everything. Yeah. And I, I can't see any straps. So I look at my right hand, and there's wires and tubes. And you guys, you got tubes coming out somewhere you didn't want a tube coming out of. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So can't do that. So I take my left hand, and I'm just going to grab onto my quad and pull myself up. 
and I reached down, nothing. Like, I can't feel my leg. And uh, I just started crying. And right then, I just started trying to figure out how a way to die, to, to kill myself. Yeah. Because mm. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to not be able to teach Bubba how to play baseball or, or cut through it or, or hit a hole, you know, on, uh, in, in, in uh, football, golf. I, it's all these things that had been taken from me. Right. All these things that, um, you know, the six foot two, 215 man that was no longer a man. That's how I viewed it. Mm. Um, so I'm laying. I'm, I'm, so your view of a man. Oh, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. Well, you could tell just the way that your attitude was even driving the V. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a brute. I'm the, you know, I, I determine how things turn out and nobody else. And then when something's saying, no, you don't, that's a tough pill to swallow. It, you okay. know, like. Yes. I'm always been, I've always been in control. Nobody tells me what to, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, having that attitude then to saying. No, you're not a hundred percent in control. But here's something you're not in control over. Now, respond to this. You know, win this battle, right? You know. So I, yeah, so I'm laying there in bed, and I can't. The reason why I couldn't sit up is I didn't know how to anymore. Yeah. I literally didn't know how to freaking sit up. Yeah. And uh, the the they I got transferred into my own hospital room finally after ten days and some. Two surgeries, my back's held together with screws and rods and yeah. all that fun stuff. By then, they have they already told you that you're not going to walk? No. Here's the interesting thing. So you're you're w touching your leg still kind of, you know, but there's that, that hope, like, no, not me, not, you know. This will resonate with every spinal cord injury ever, if okay. anyone listening right now. Okay. Tomorrow, it'll be better. Tomorrow, it's going to be just fine. There's a magic pill somewhere. Like, the paralysis doesn't happen to me. This yeah. is not real like this. I'm just going to do the best I can today because tomorrow, even if the best they can is, is laying there in bed because tomorrow I'm going to walk. And I don't know. I have not come across any spinal cord injury that doesn't have that mentality. Right. Like just maybe, maybe there's a new surgery or maybe there's something's going to happen with technology or this or, or that. God or my like, prayers or are going to be answered yeah. and God's going to come down. And, and you're looking for any reason oh. at that point, And then you just hold on to that. Do you think that that's a lot of the reasons why, you know, individuals still look forward to something and still have a reason to be on this earth? Cause you said for one minute you were talking about yes. how do I end it? Yes. Right. Like, yeah. is that hope? the positive thing that makes somebody want to get to the next that day? is bro you hit it on the head hope is i think the the one thing stronger than fear is hope mm -hmm. so it, you could be scared but it, it, you can be scared out of your wits uh, a cancer a uh, child anything but the hope of okay things are gonna be okay and there's they're gonna get better there's a possibility all i need is a possibility and i'm that guy correct because i'm yeah. different than everybody else correct. and that all i need is that yeah and I go, and let's go. Yeah. And that, that's me. That's the mentality. Yeah, I can see that. So I've got video. Here's the other thing. I was so, I'm Matt Blanchard. I'm bigger than paralysis. Like paralysis, really? Yeah. I mean, that, that's nothing. Right. And I remember being in the parallel bars and, and people having to move my body. And I would just dissociate. And I would push this broken thing harder than it probably should have been mm. and it came at a cost and and addiction you know i got addicted to pain medication been there done that my man so you get the yeah you then you know you 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 wake up in the morning that's the first thing you think about it's the last thing you do before oh, you yeah. go to bed and throughout the and day if you don't have it you're trying to think of a like, way to get it yep, yep looking oh. around what can i pawn what can i get rid of how can i just get 20 bucks 30 bucks yeah, and then when I'm short, I'm calling my man. Yep. And when my man's short, he's calling yeah. me, bro, bro, yeah. bro. And the, Those are some nasty times, dude. Right. Those are Dark. some nasty. Yeah, yeah. Some of the shit, dude. Some of the, some of the things that I've like seen, it, like just in terms of druggies. Yeah. With you know, like needles out on like desks and yeah like people just a bunch of people with their shirts off and blood dripping down that like but 
what's weird to me is like looking back at that now, like it kind of looks like a horror scene when I look back at it. But that was like, yeah, dude, fucking Thursday. That's just the thing. Dude. It's yeah, a right, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Bro, you know what I mean? It's I, just another I, day. I, Isn't that so weird? Oh my gosh! I rem- you bring this up now, boy, it brings back brings back the memories. So it's going to this dark dude's time, house, man. yeah, and to get my fix and um, lights are off heating the house with a with a, a coleman stove yeah like you go camping with are you shitting me yeah and i'm not thinking anything of it yeah but now that's where my mind went that's the story my mind went when you're talking about that yeah here's my i've always been a good person mm. that didn't make good decisions mm. and i think there's a lot of people that are addicted to meds or addicted to anything addicted to these damn things mm-hmm. that um are good people they they, they, they just something else something is in control them, them yeah. right now, yeah. and they just need to take control back so that they could be who they are. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you're not who you are when you're on something, right? Yeah. You're on that thing, whatever that. You're on electronics. You're on alcohol. You're on pills. You're on you know whatever it is that you're on. You're on that. You're not you. You're not your authentic. And you're self. always thinking, you- dude. I was I was the I was probably the worst human being on the planet. When mm. I was on, like, people that knew me then, like Megan, we were just, you know, uh, you did her whatever, went to her 40th husband's birthday party or something. But she knew me back then when I would, like, sleep on floors and shit. I was the grumpiest, nastiest person to be around. Um, it's just a, but I didn't, wh- what did I have, ha- what was going on in my life that I should have been happy about at the right, same right. time? I'm sleeping on a floor. Right. A drug addict, you know, but uh, completely Yeah, completely different individual. And I love what you just said, that if you're that dependent on something just to uh, produce whatever you're trying to produce, whether that's you producing you getting out of bed for that day. Right. Or producing whatever, whatever, whatever it is, that's that's probably not a good thing. Right. You know what I mean? And so I'm, I'm glad that you highlighted that and brought that up. Yeah. Let me ask you this. From the moment that you said, how do I end it, to the mm. moment where you really empowered mm. yourself, what was the gap there between the accident date and you saying, all right, th- this this is my thing. I'm going to own this thing, and I'm going to make it the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> great, so great question, bro. Um, oh. what was that gap and some of the trials that you had to go through to, to reach that? Oh, uh, bro, five months. Okay. Five, it, it, it's Because you know. Yeah. You know. And the day was the day my bride had had enough of me. And she, it's still on my mirror today. It's on like with permanent markers says, what kind of day is it going to be today? You decide. Because yeah. she not had an ass full of, of yeah. that. That being said, and, and not trying to protect or justify what I thought was a man had been taken from my wife. And my yeah. wife didn't yeah. sign up for this shit. Yeah. You know, and I, me being, I'm not, I'm not going to have her settle for something and unbeknownst to me she'd been praying for years that i'd be humbled and that i would um need her need her Mm. she you know so that'll tell you a little bit of what kind of guy husband i was yeah not a good husband yeah great father not a good husband yeah so um said every mean thing that you could possibly think of to get my marriage uh get her to leave me um I said every, every, everything. And I, she was bawling, crying. And she told me, I didn't marry your legs. I love you. And then with tears coming down her face, she went and wrote that on the mirror. And that's still there today. Mm-hmm. So it's five months of being a complete fucking asshole. Five months of uh, being a pity party. You were just trying to get party. everybody out of your life. Oh, and you wanted to yes. create a life that uh, visually... Uh, compared to what you were feeling internally, yes. just dark and alone. Yep. Is so you were you were making your insides your external reality. Yep. Is what you were trying to, but you know somebody didn't let that happen. And 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 where do we get these people? Like my bride, I don't know. Without her, I'm not here today. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Right. And you know, people look, look at what I've gone through and and say, Matt, you're so strong and. My bride is is Natalie friggin' Blanchard is yeah the she's got your beat the rod of iron mm-hmm. the steel the the go to the rock the no I mean waves crash against her she's she is strong Stands tall 
she's strong, man. Dude, that's cool. She's my I everything. Love that. Yeah, she's my freaking everything. So from that moment on, yeah, you jumped back into the business side of things. Like when did when yes. did you slowly just say, there you go. Eh, uh, I'm I'm done over here and start inspiring people and start doing like let's talk about that transition that, as that, well. Okay, so the, so I'm in. I'm I'm going to work again. You know, I'm going to get your lady. On. Finally, just put the backhand all over Bro, your ass. Got your up. ass in check. Ego went out. Humble, boom, boom. You're good. Next step is yep. what for Matt? Yep. Okay. So now, now I owe the IRS a lot of money. Uh. Okay, because I've been, I've spent five months. Because you didn't hire easier accounting. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I. That's correct. And yeah. Yeah. Continue. Continue. <laughs> no so plugs I did, here. I did not. I, I did not. <laughs> I did not. I did not surround myself with the right yeah. people to, to make me successful. Best, we've got to make best use of our time too, Matt. We've got to advertise. Yeah. <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone. Getting to know Matt. I did not have. <laughs> just, just, anyways, Kale Cal, Cal, Cal told me f you, bro. No, yeah, you, no yeah. he's like, I don't have time for your uh, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Man, back in 06, I was just barely getting started. Barely yeah. getting started, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't yeah. even ready for you at that point, yeah. probably. I didn't know but you then. Um, neck deep in uh, in. In, in IRS issues yeah. and what happened from there. Yeah. So with like with any problem, you gotta hit it head on. So I just called the IRS up and and they have a division down here in, in St. George and they showed up at my morning at my door every freaking morning at seven o'clock. Jeez. And they sat in my office with me and we went over everything. And I, I just opened my books to them. I opened everything to yeah. them. Tell so me they, what you want and have it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and they wanted they wanted oh. it. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. But they it, so no. now, now they're dealing. I'm dealing with my suppliers who I owe uh, three quarters of a million dollars yeah. to, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in just supplies that that haven't been paid. I mean, I've got I got a million dollars, you know. So what happened in the business by the time of the accident was there? Was your right hand like? What did was mm. somebody kind of trying to operate it without you? And did it make things mess? Yes, because they didn't know things behind yes. the scenes or. Well, okay, so I did the I did all of the relationships yeah. i did all the networking yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you, you were know. getting the business and and then my lead guy you know my partner he was with you in the accident yeah no 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 he's a different guy altogether. Oh, okay. gotcha. yeah he uh he would run the cruise run all the guys i mean i did i did the payroll i did i did all the paperwork hiring firing all that kind gotcha. of stuff if i showed up on the job it was either really good because i was yeah. taking everybody to lunch or really bad because somebody's getting fired yeah but uh, he did a, a great job. He just didn't know. He paid the guys. We had money, but we owed the IRS. We owed we owed supplies. We owed. So it looks like you had money. Maybe uh, it looked value like you. If there's a two three hundred grand sitting in a bank account, right? But you owe two three hundred over here. Plus right. you owe the IRS another hundred two hundred whatever. Yep. Uh, that's a false sense of comfort. So yes. old boy was just business as usual, taking care of people. Yep. Maybe a little too much. There yep. just had to be a decision made, right? You know, you're like, oh, you know what? Just turn it over to the IRS and go a different direction, which is probably super freaking hard to do, right? Like, because that's your baby, man. Yeah, you built yeah. that bad boy from. Yeah. I, I remember starting my company with ten grand. That's it. Yeah, that is yeah. all I had. That's yeah. it. And I and I did it, man. I did it, and uh, you know, turned it. Well, I think what the most we ever did was a little over seven million in a year, but. Mm. We that's did. We did good. That's good. Yeah. You know, and, and especially late nineties, early, early, yeah. you know, two thousands, that's some good numbers. And you, you go in and good you, numbers today, even mama, mama loved the car. I was an idiot. Yeah. I spent every last dime I made. I did. Um, I know a couple of guys who preach against that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've done it well, too, man. Yeah, I learned yeah, the hard way yeah. too. Did <laughs> you been really through, re- oh yeah. I've been through some highs and some low lows and rebuilt and you know, so I can totally relate. I, I'm grateful for the lows. Sure. I'm grateful for the the lessons, now looking back with the, the lessons, IRS being yeah. up my ass yeah. every morning. And but the stress, bro, the stress and the anxiety, right. knowing yeah. that you don't have the money to pay them, they're coming anyway, yeah. and they're just going to sit there and and wait for you to, and they're going to help you make com- phone calls to collect their money. You know, mm. so it was rough. What a trip. It was really rough. I mean, our payroll was in between. 20 and 30,000 a week. Yeah. You know, and and so yeah, our 941s they added up in a hurry. Oh yeah. Um, Absolutely. 
Man, so you I've never res- actually um, dealt with anything like that. Like, you know, we've dealt with audits and yeah. things like that where they're, yeah. you know, you get someone to represent you and it's like, it's still a pain in the ass, but to have them sitting there cool. like, let's make calls today. Yep. Let's look at your books today. Uh, your ass. You know, let's call yeah. the suppliers. Let's, yep. you know, file bankruptcy, whatever uh, it is, right? Your like, ass, oh man. my gosh, that would be miserable, that man. Would, it was horrible. It, would be. it was horrible. It was, it was horrible. Um, so the the settlement was take my accounts receivable. Yep. Here you go. Yep. You know it's all you. And then we decided I, you I, wash I, your hands I, of that. I told my my guy, yeah. my lead guy, look, you can use my license, you can do everything, but I'm done with this bullshit. I can't. I don't. Yeah. Health wise, everything. I'm I'm focused yeah. on other things. Yeah. And uh, so ended up filing bankruptcy in 2010 okay. on Titleist Electric, and which came along with personal bankruptcy as well yeah. and then you just you rebuild yeah. like what are you gonna do you're gonna sit around and just like let because the world will effing steamroll you well it's gonna keep going whether you like it or not i mean it it the sun doesn't feel bad enough not to <laughs> shine yeah. the next morning right it's <laughs> going to come I mean? up. it's coming yeah. you yeah. know and whether you do something or not other people will, so you might as well get a head start on on climbing yourself out. But one thing I've learned yeah. is, I used to get anxiety and being Xanax and, and any benzo, and the and then just a switch, literally. I, I'll never take another benzo in my life. Anxiety comes from not being present, mm-hmm. focusing on like what am I gonna, what am I going to eat after here? Yeah. Where am I going to go? What's da, 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 da. whereas I'm present with y'all. This is a good ass time. Yeah. Right. But if I'm worried about my next speaking engagement or if I'm not present with you, A, I'm discrediting who I'm with. Yeah. And uh, that's I one like gift that. that I have is, is when I'm with somebody, I hopefully make them feel like they're the most important person in the room and um, give them, give of my time. And I, that's the one thing that we all have the same. I, mean, of. Um, I think. You made Kel feel that way when you guys really connected at the beginning of the podcast about your past. <laughs> uh, I really felt like an outsider on that. Hey, listen, Let's hey, get you. on our team or get out of our way, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, come on. Hey, <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's how it's going down. Huh? Okay. So, what was I want to know? I want to yeah. know real quick. Like, so, dude, you've gone through obviously rebuilding going through a bunch of physical shit, trying yeah. to get the business going again. Then you hit this new low of like, man, I, I got to turn my business over. Like what was, what? I mean, both of them are so hard to rebuild yeah, from. Yeah. What was like the moment that you're like, I got to do something different. How did you decide what that was going to be? It. I love it. So I, I decided, okay, so this, this doctor labeled me and says, look, you're a T12 complete spinal cord injury. You're not going to walk. Finally. You know, they, they told me that, uh, gosh, three months later, yeah, we, but I'm thankful for those first three months because, yeah. dude, I grinded. Yeah, I, like I, and even when the homeboy told me you're not gonna wipe, I'm like, I literally, this is asinine to say, you don't know me, dog. I'm like, bro, yeah. you don't know who I Come am, at me, bro. Yeah, no. like, meet me outside, right? You're now. gonna tell me yeah. I'm gonna be in a wheelchair in for the rest of my life? You're frigging high. Yeah, you're high. Yeah. yeah, and um, so we, th- I think that's a brain's way of coping. And. It I, has to be. I bet you, like you what, said, what we every, have control you, of. Me, have, right. my attitude, Everybody my has effort. Cope, yes. Yeah, yeah. That was a way to protect you and cope with it, so that it, you 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 get to that point where you're just like, now there's something new that drives you every single day. Yeah. Right. And so that's the thing that you're focused on. Right. Jump back into school. Yeah. Again, for pre med. Okay. okay. So goals. You know, I I when I I preach goals. So I, my goal is I'm going to walk, and I'm. Let me re-say, say that again. I'm going to walk. Yeah. So now we've got this idea. How are we going to get to that idea? Mm. And well, first I got to get my socks on and I got to be able to sit up and roll over get, and all that shit I had to learn again. Yeah. And grinding, grinding, grinding. And so, cause I've got this little girl who's 23 now and, and fa- when little girls get married, fathers walk their little girl down the aisle. Yeah. So we spent um, the next 10 years, seriously, therapy every day, learning how to walk with these forearm crutches. And I got mm. down to where I was dialed. Mm. And we went out to Homestead, and we practiced coming down those stairs. And it broke, dialed in. Yeah. Walk my little girl. I'm going to So we were, I was going to roll up to the top of the stairs, and she's going to help me to a stand because she's a, a nurse. And then we're going to walk down the stairs, practice it over and over and over again. 
And so September 25th of 2022, she's getting married. Well, February, February 12th of 2021, sorry, 2021, uh, September 2021. Well, February 12th of 2021, I get in another freaking accident. Mm-hmm. And, um, and those, you guys, I got to say, like, he showed us the video. He has it oh. on a dash cam, and it's like, this was definitely not your fault. You right. know what I mean? You're just cruising. Right. Was it to Vegas? Yeah. Going You're just to cruising Vegas. to Vegas, and nothing out of nowhere, there's this car with no headlights in the middle of the road. Cracks me. Yeah. 120. So, yeah, it, it, I'm, I was in the slow lane going 80 miles an hour, and uh, the driver was intoxicated and came through that median, hit uh, some bushes, took out her headlights, and it was at night, and I... I, you saw, you can't make out what that thing is. Yeah. You didn't know what it was. It just, it came so quick that yeah. know, there's zero reaction time because you can't see the headlights coming right at you because the bushes took them out or dulled them enough to where yeah. it just, next thing you know, it was there because yeah. it was pitch black in the, on the freeway. So I'm in my car Yeah. and I'm broken. I am, my leg is broken and twisted backwards and I'm holding that up and I'm, I can, my truck's on fire and luckily I, CNA or yeah. somebody had a fire extinguisher and put the fire out in my truck and it shoved the engine up into the driver's compartment and I was trapped down below and uh anyway for a second time they had to cut me out of the truck and put me on the gurney and put me in the helicopter life flight me and I was paralyzed again so yeah. so those 10 years gone, started over gone bro so me walking my little girl down the aisle, you know, mm. and, uh, but again, I, I say that, I, I don't say that, I say it solemnly yeah, because life happens for me and who knows, maybe I trip her up, maybe she goes down, maybe, who knows, but all I know is I have control of my attitude, yeah, my effort, and what and I'm going to do. And that was the memory of the wedding of you tripping, you know what I mean? Like you just... Uh, Again, you just have to believe. You just have to believe. Because if you don't, you'll drive yourself mad. And you have to believe. Yes, you have to to to, to your core, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 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 it doesn't matter what anybody if anybody doesn't even understand what you're what you're going through, and a lot of people don't. But you if you believe in something, then go and get people who who believe in you too, or at least will support you. Yeah. Love you through whatever the hell. And love you through all your crazy ideas. Go get it, man. You know, and that's what my wife all of it. has done. So I did. So I get back into school, pre med. I'm going to be a doctor. Get accepted to medical school out here in uh, Ivans. Oh wow! And then Mama says, "No, I don't want you going to medical school. It's going to be a lot of money, and you're going to be fifty. Da da da. Okay, I'll, I'll listen. So I I uh, applied to PA school and got accepted to PA school in Arizona. And my wife again said, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so now I teach anatomy down at Dixie State, and I'm a public speaker. Yeah. So, but you know what? I, I think everybody needs to have a goal. And, and, but a goal without a plan is a dream. Mm-hmm. And you need to get the right people. Because, I mean, you're going to have a goal to be an NBA player, but you're not going to go surround yourself with, I don't know, Jabberwockies to be an N- NBA player. You got to go hang around NBA players, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, and, 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 and Trev, like when, when I was an addict, guess who I was friggin' hanging out with? Other friggin' addicts, man. Kind of weird how that works. Right. You know? mm-hmm. And, yeah. and so I, the, the goes off my, you know, goes off, hey, if you want to be a millionaire, billionaire, then you better start hanging out with people who've done this. Yeah. And so, you know, you go get the Joes and you go get, you go get the Kales, you go get the Turks and, and you go to friggin' work, man. You do. And uh, is it scary? I don't think this is scary. To be quite honest with you, I think it, it's okay to set a, a massive, a huge goal. Uh, it, it's And it's okay not to have it completely mapped out. Uh-huh. It's okay not to see it from start to finish. Okay? But you have to start taking action on the next logical thing to do that inches you one step closer to that goal. Because once you get to that point, the next logical decision will reveal itself. Amen. And then you, and you can, but start, you could start creating a plan and moving in that direction, 
But don't think that your 10 year plan has to be completely mapped out perfectly because it's not going to probably go down the way that you map it out anyways. But start doing the idea is your likelihood of taking action increases when there's actually a plan in place. Amen. Right. Your likelihood of hitting the target it increases even if you don't again honor that plan 100 percent right just take that next best step get one inch closer to that thing and again that'll lead you to the next inch closer to that thing to, to whatever where you're, it is whatever you're trying to do yeah so i wanted to be a physician going that way and then something got in the way that was supposed to you know you correct have all these other distractions correct. like you're saying yeah but take the right that distraction was, you make that you made that first step and then Okay, this was going to be the next step in the plan, but sometimes it, it's a sidestep. Yeah, whatever. And that's okay. And be pliable. Whatever happened through all your challenges and rebuilding is obviously instilled something in you where you just you just want to serve people, man. You know yes. what I mean? Oh, and it's like that's what bro. I love about what oh, you're building. Bro. His brand is I inspire. The guy goes and talks to young kids, at schools. He meets with principals you know, all different ages and grade levels and man, you're healing, right? Like yeah. you're like, I want to be a doctor yes. probably because you love to heal, yes. right? Oh, yes. I want to be a PA probably because you love to heal. But man, like this guy is talking to crowds and schools about the addictions and their mental health. And, and for them to not only see a guy that's been through rebuilding Belly so back. many times, businesses, your legs, multiple accidents, and still be able to wake up with an attitude of like, life is great. Yeah. It's worth living. Yeah. Dude, that's so powerful. Like that, 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 that shit inspires me. You are healing, bro. Like you're a freaking doctor yeah. already, man. Like <laughs> no, talking to these, no, I, talking to these schools, you know, helping kids with their yeah. man, their social media these days, uh, all the stuff you're talking on yeah. to help these kids with their mental health in check is so important. There needs to be more of you, dude. I, I so, think he has. You. I think he has far more power than a doctor. 100%. A doctor has the ability to infect change, maybe one person at a time, and I think that you have the ability to do that with large groups at a time right and so the ripple effect when you have the ability to take one conversation with 200 people uh, and then those 200 people they make that tweak change adjustment to their life based upon a message now they all know 50 people and that you know see i'm saying yeah your, your ripple effect exactly what kel's talking mm -hmm. about a healing ripple effect a different perspective effect um, and that's really a lot. All people really need to heal is yep. just a new perspective. You know, these girls, that's really what it comes down to. I'll get, I'll, you know, you, we all have that voice in our head, right? And, and my voice is damn positive. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I'm not the voice. I listen to that voice. So when, when, when some, a negative thought comes in that you're not good enough or, Sure. Or whatever, which I, is completely normal, by the way, for a hundred percent of everybody human beings. Has and everybody so has it, right? That. Sure. Yeah. The girls need to know when they have a thought of inadequacy or whatever. I tell them, "You are beautiful," and I have the entire crowd say, "Girls, here we go. What do you say? I am beautiful. I am beautiful." And you got you know, eight hundred girls or whatever saying, "I am beautiful," and then the, with us guys, you know what? When we when we have self doubt, I'm the man. Yeah, because I'll tell you this right now. I am the man. Yeah, I am the frigging man. And I, I'm we'll the only one that statement. Too. Thanks, brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it right there, I'm the only one like yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. You know, and um, like we were talking a little earlier, Kale could try to be like me. I got another chair. We check it out. But you're going to fall short. And if I try to be Kale or Trev, I'm going to fall short. So why not just be the best me? Right. The very best Matt Blanchard I could be today, because that's what I have control of. I. Why the hell would I want to be like Trevor? Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, he's a handsome fool. He's put together a little more than me, but uh, hey, I know I got things over him. But here's the thing: now we're on the same team. Now my my network, my tools are your tools. Straighter. You're yeah. stronger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So go surround yourself with people instead of hanging out with the drug addicts, which we both could have been doing right now. Mm -hmm. We've got our shit together, and that was hard. Again, it all comes back to the power of choice. We all have the ability to choose how we view things, right? Yeah. We, we have the ability to choose whether we want to be positive and look at a, uh, uh, what seems to be a bad situation. We can look at it and just say, hmm, my life, my, you know, poor me, poor. Or we could choose to shine a different light on it, a new perspective and say, well, maybe that's happening again for me as we've t kind of talked about and alluded to on the podcast you have the choice to either feel bad for yourself right. or convince yourself that that actually happened for a positive reason that you just haven't found out yet, <laughs> right? I think a lot with business. 
is if it, it, you and I trade places, okay? Now you got my bank account, I got your bank account, and I don't know that I could manage, I, in fact, I know I can't manage your accounts and manage your people because all the bullshit you've had to go through to get to where you're at today. I hadn't, I didn't go through that bullshit. Yeah. And too many people want the boat and the house and, and all this other that they haven't gone through having everything taken from them mm -hmm. to rebuild that again. If, Let it, me ask you this though. How much more enlightened and happy was your life with just anything and everything that you ever wanted, but you had the ego? Right. Versus what you have now. Well, how much you better see what is your oh, you see what I'm saying? Okay, There's so happiness in that statement. isn't joy. Happiness is not being, because you, you have too much joy, too much stimulation of, of joy or happiness. That's going to, think about it. That's going to wear you out. Christmas every morning, that's, you're, you're tired. That's going to wear you out. That's, right. That's too much dope to the brain. You but know if you're I mean? at peace yeah. with you and how you, how I interact with Trev, how I interact with Kale, mm -hmm. If you're at peace with that, that's that's where that's where you, I'm at. I feel like what you're saying too is to get at, to peace with, with that is stop stop comparing and competing. Yeah, you know what I mean. I made a post on this not too long ago. It's like we don't need to compare. We don't need to compete. We need to create. I can I can create great things with you because you got strengths yes. I don't got. Yes, I got strengths you don't got. Trevor's yes. got strengths mm -hmm. you, we don't got. Right. Yes. So yes. it's like we can create together. Yes. You know we don't have to compete and compare. We're never going to be the same. Right. And Amen. so now you can be at peace, man, and you can actually be happy and you can experience joy. Amen. And you can serve other people. A and all of that right there is you just summed up Matt Blanchard's life right yeah. there. I, I, okay. So people ask me all the time, why are you so happy? How you can be so happy all the time? Like, you know, show up in the ballpark is a party. Because you can't not go up and say what up to Matt, <laughs> yeah, yeah. bro. Yeah, because if you, you don't, I don't He's care where you're at. Trev, you'll find like, you're it. in yeah. it now, bro. You're yeah, you're yeah, there yeah, now. Yeah, okay? yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 if I yell at you, cross it. on a swivel <laughs> like this. Just go, in Costco, boom. I'll be like, Trev, I'm Trev, go, Trev. Yeah, yeah. You see all these people uh, down. Uh, yeah, you're, you're yeah. lying down. The mat again. Oh, Matt's going to find him. He's going to find him. party in Costco in that back corner where you hide. But that's where it's at, too. Park. I'll tell you, that is where you it's at. You the bathroom. He'll be out there waiting for you. Yo, what's good? Uh, you didn't say what's up. You know, so there's something, there's a saying I tell my kids. Kale okay, will laugh at this. But the, I, this is true how I feel about you guys. And we're talking about com competing, right? Right. Y'all don't compete. Y'all dominate. Mm. And that's how, that's what I do. I want to be the very best at what I do, yeah. and I think I am. Yeah. And uh, you could put me up against any other motivational speaker, inspirational speaker. I, I'll, I'll go toe to toe with Tony. I will. I'll go toe to toe with yeah. Tony. Hey, how about Ed Milet? Yeah, it's great. What? Yeah, it's phenomenal. Unbelievable. Yeah. I reached out to him a couple times, and you know we, we've we've DM'd or, and, and stuff like that. But I saw that 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 had to be something special. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So we joined one of their mastermind groups. Yeah. Man. So we got to get get to know those guys a little bit more. Bomb. And yeah. He's dude. He's an incredible guy. You know. But yeah, he loves to speak. Yeah. You know, he loves to serve. He's like you. You know. So when you're in the service of others, if you get the hell out of your way, and you're in the service of others, you're providing a service that you believe in, like y'all are doing, and I'm doing. It's an easy sell. Mm. Like I call these. I call these. Uh, it's so funny how it switches when you go from chasing money. To, uh, to just more focus on service and then you attract the money. Mm -hmm. So you, you determine whether you're running towards it and you're chasing it and it's running away. So right. it's a freaking rat race. <laughs> right. You got to go or through that a little bit, right? Sit in, yo, you have yeah. to. Or you, you go, go through, through it, it, you learn it, you know, yep. and then you add more value to the marketplace. Yep. The more and more value you add to the marketplace, you you literally start having too many opportunities. You're just like, no, I'm good. Like, right. you got to figure out what to say no to now. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's what starts happening. I when think you tune into that type of frequency. Do you want to make that's, a million bucks? Good shit. Go serve a million people. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee yeah. you're going to make way over a million dollars serving a million people. Yeah. And, and whatever that might be. So you're right. Money now where I was chasing, now you have to kind of pick and choose what, what ventures you, or joint sure. ventures you want to go out on. And, yeah. and, you know, different opportunities and you, and you meet other people and, yeah. and, and, and your network grows. And I think as long as you're just, like the four agreements, impeccable with your word. Mm. Don't take things personal. Yeah. Uh, I cannot remember the other two. 
But uh, anyway. I haven't read that book yet. I've heard amazing oh. things. It's a short read too. It's a little teeny book. Yeah, yeah. Let, 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 about this book is short read. The Four Agreements. Highly My recommend. Type of book. It. Yeah, yeah it, lots of pictures, pop up things. You know. Let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I need that. If it doesn't hit me in the face, I, I just <laughs> yeah. don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me ask you this: Does it ever frustrate you to see individuals that you know their legs are working just and they're not being active with their body and they're not utilizing this gift that they've been granted and chasing their full potential. Yes, like, there's is that, is right is there. Is there like a little, is that an irritant to you when you see somebody that's <sighs> maybe like at the grocery store that's just, mm. you know, and again, I don't mm -hmm. want to be hard. Nope. But you say it because I know where you're going. Pounds yep, that's where you're going. And they have this thing and the only thing that they're doing is just destroying this place that they have to live with yep. in yep. for Taking their it for whole their life, yeah. taking yep. it for granted. You know, like I've thought about that so many times when I didn't want to get out of bed. And I'm like, I guarantee you there's somebody that would do anything to get out of bed and put their feet on the ground and put some fucking weight on it again. And so uh, I've had to say those things sometimes to actually get myself out of bed. And so having you here, I've wanted to ask, yeah, like just seeing people like your 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 perspective and your mind is so sharp. But then when you see people on a frequency like that, does that kind of irritate you a little bit? So I'll go down, yes, and I'll go and uh, talk to, I, I can't not talk to him. I, I'm that guy. I can't. You go not, right up bro, to them and you say. Right up to him. So Take so, advantage of what you have. Yeah. I'll, so the 400-pound the man or woman that's in the cart in, at Albertsons, mm. I'll just go up and inter introduce myself. And I'll just tell him, look, I've been overweight. I've, my body's been broken. There's things you can do. Here's my number. If I can help you in any way that I think, you know, wow. you can take better care, care of yourself. And they, I can say things that other people can't say. I don't know why it is. Well, because they have something that they're not using that you know how powerful it is. And deep down, they know that oh. too. They know that. Bro. Everybody knows deep down in their heart whether they're doing something to their full potential. Right. They know oh. deep down that they're letting themselves down. And sometimes, guess what? As harsh as it is, some people need somebody else to say it to them because they're still sugarcoating it enough in their brain. Yeah. Just enough. Be that water. Wash off that sugar coat of their brain. Make them real. Like, peel the curtain back, whatever it is. Dude. But sometimes you have to have a harsh truth coming from a third party that ultimately shakes things up enough that wakes you up to the point where maybe you course correct. And, 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 you know, I'll go into those situations and compliment first, whether it's eyes or whether it's um, whatever. Beautiful you know. day out. Yep. Wow. Yep. Yep. Love your shoes. Hey, when, yeah. Yeah. We, let's, and let's park the cart here. I'll stay with you and just be on my shoulder and let's walk over to your car. You know, let's just, how, how far has it been since you've walked? Like I spend time with people. Like yeah. I spend time on people. And Have you had people reach out uh, yeah. after that? And, yeah. And, and, and created some relationships there. Yeah. Yeah. You it's know, probably because your intentions are pure too. You're like, yeah. man, you yeah, know I'm I mean? not you trying to be that. an asshole. It's right. not yeah. about you. You're like, man, I just, right. I want I know you I to be you. your best self. And right. I know that you're not, and you know that you're not. Right. Yeah. You know, and we talked a little bit about that. My, our, but my buddy, Sean, you know, mm -hmm. that, that got in the, in the bike accident mm -hmm. recently. And, and he's trying to find himself big and, guy. and the, the big guy, seven foot six guy, Sean Bradley. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah, we were with the with each other uh, a couple of days ago, and he, he's such a good dude. Great yeah. dude. We need yeah. to have him over here. Yeah. I've Hilt only ran yeah. into him in town before, dude, and he is such a nice guy. Oh. But it was before his accident. But, uh, oh, yeah, I'd love to have him come in. He is looking, and we can talk about uh, 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 when we're off, but we'll, we need to get yeah. him in here. Yeah, you yeah. guys can help him yeah. and uh, on in, in many different aspects. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to. And maybe but the vice versa, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, sure. But, uh, well, yeah, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And um, sometimes you're right. People need to hear it from an outside party, but from a place of love. I'm always coming from love. Always. Even as harsh as I am, I'm coming from love. Yeah. I don't have a and hard I, time giving yeah. you a compliment on your body. You work hard on your body. Yeah. I don't, but at the same time, I don't have a hard time going over to Homeboy and saying, look, we should probably mix in a salad. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Well, I mean. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if, again, it's just your aura or whatever. The frequency that you're on, like Kel said, like some people are lucky enough to be able to be very straightforward and very blunt, and people actually take it uh, in more of a they care about me yeah. way. Yeah. And then there's other people that can say the exact same thing, and they're like, 
Screw you. Right, right. And it, and it flares up anger. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Like maybe they've been picked on or something in the past by somebody that put out that same negative energy, right? And they and, and people pick up on that. But when you when you're doing it and you start the conversation with equity, hey, beautiful day, I love your shoes. Boom, equity. Yep. 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 Why, if I was just a straight dickhead, why would I say that? Right. <laughs> right. I'm a nice guy. I'm, but I'm, also nice shoes. Hey, they let's go. U- on. Yeah, let's go use those things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's wear some tread on them. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever. <laughs> However you want to put it. But <laughs> no, no, uh, it, again, it, it's and, true. and it's not trying to be harsh or this, that, the other. I just honestly think that people don't understand enough how blessed they are if you're able to move your legs. And if you're not doing that, that this is what our body was. Oh. We have extremities for oh. a reason. We're built for movement. Oh. And if you're not doing it, you're not honoring the body that God gave you. Okay. If you're not doing everything that you can with what you have right now, you're doing yourself and everybody that you love a disservice. Right. There's a harsh truth for you. Unfortunately, it is what it is. You made it the oh. way it is. And if it stings just a little bit, the message was for you. You already knew that. The only reason why it stings is because I'm validating the truth that exists that you've been trying to not shine light on. That's just the fact. Bam. <laughs> Bam. So if you want your kid to lose weight, guess what, mama? You're the one that buys the freaking groceries. Well, lead yeah. by example, too. Right? Exactly. So, Say, so we're going for change, a walk for 30 minutes sh- every hey, single man, night. Change some shiz up. Yeah, like all it starts is we, we talked about this in the Monday. Steph was there, the meeting this morning. I said, just do one, one. Please, everybody, just create one new habit. Yeah. It'll lead to another. It'll lead to another. Like it's impossible to exercise and constantly just eat like shit. Yeah. You kind of feel guilty because right. you're sore. And when you're sore, you're like, dang, I, I got to feed these things. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> I should get the steak. Like, I guess I should. Right. Those little reminders of that one good habit lingers. And right. Then maybe you'd choose the water over the soda or whatever the next one is. But uh, that's really what it comes down to. If the next good habit is just a 15 minute walk every night, make that your thing. Amen. And then, and then, and then see what happens after that. Don't even, don't even, don't even do anything outside. And of that who knows yet. you, who you meet on that walk and who you talk to on right. that walk you know, and what friends you who, meet. Who on that. And you want to know who they're going to meet on the walk? And they're going to meet them fucking selves. Exactly. Because they, their blood hasn't been moving. Their dopamine hasn't been hitting. They haven't been thinking as clearly as they could because and I know for a, meet they, themselves. It'll, be, it'll meet themselves. Damn That's right. the motherfucker you're going to meet right. when you're out there on the street. Damn right. Like when you're doing something that you haven't been doing and you're in silence and it's you and you, guess who you're going to have a conversation with? You. And guess what? When your when your blood's moving, you're a little bit more honest with yourself. Amen. You're a little bit more direct, and you'll start saying, "You know what? I'm better than what I've been 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 producing. I'm better than this bullshit." And when that dopamine's hitting, you're yep. feeling good. Yep. Guess what? It's just like another high. You're gonna want another hit. Go again. The same hits waiting for you tomorrow. That other fifteen. And minute you're walk. sore, bro. And and the goal is to get sore, right? Like exactly. if you don't go work out and you're yeah. not sore, you're like, oh, I cheated myself. Yeah. I must have cheated yeah. myself because yeah. I'm not sore. Yep. Right. And 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 same with this dopamine hit. I'm telling you, bro. You get that hit, hit. hit on the head. <laughs> get that dopamine hit. hit. But it is true, though, man. Great. You keep showing up to that stuff, yep. and then all of a sudden you do start attracting other people. You start showing up to different places. Maybe you start running marathons. You make the greatest connections with other runners Bike. or bikers or swimmers or Find whatever, your next right? best like, friend, yeah. Next, next thing you know, you, I mean, because really that's where I think true so wealth true. is. I think true wealth isn't necessarily a dollar. I mean, that's a great tool to help build whatever we want, but the relationships that we build in our life and how we serve people and people serve us, I mean, that's the real wealth, right? Bro, bro, you and should. that's when you attract people is when you're tapped into that. You know what I mean? I judge wealth by uh, by networks, yeah. I really do. Yeah. You, you've got these multi-millionaire billionaires or whatever that are uh, isolated, yeah. or they don't they don't have friends, or they've burnt the X Y Z to get to where they're at. And um, I, yeah, the, the, your true wealth is what you're gonna leave behind, yeah. you, not what you're taking with you. Yeah. I mean, we're all born to die, yeah. right? What what we do in the middle is what counts. What's Absolutely. important. Yeah. So. So what's next for you, brother? Like I know you're you're talking to schools, you're doing motivational speaking. Yeah. You talked earlier about your vision board. What does that look like? Yeah, okay. It's coming so, up. Yeah, I've got a foundation, uh, today's first step nonprofit. And we've we've got the board put together and we've got some quality people on this board. Like quality people, man. And Joe's on there, uh Joe Levine and and uh, we've got ten people on this board anyway. 
we're gonna the, the we're gonna have uh, we're gonna be bigger than uh, Make a Wish Foundation. We're gonna have buildings in every single state. We're gonna be the largest nonprofit on the on the planet, and that will be my legacy. That's cool. Yeah. And what's it called? It's called today's, today's first step. Very yep. Cool, today's first step. So yeah, you're, you'll start. What, it's, what and it's regarding. Okay, so. Um, so we've, we've, right? we've already teamed up with city St. George mm-hmm. and, uh, with Intermountain healthcare. And we are going to, uh, to begin with, we'll, we'll take, uh, paraplegics, quadriplegics and go bowling. Uh, Dixie bowls donated the, their thing. And so these people, bro, I bowl. Okay. Yeah. Have you, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I know, I'll beat Trevor. Uh, I'll, I'll beat uh, Trev. Dude. I'll beat Trev. <laughs> Left I'll, go, I'll, I'll, I'll go to Dixie Bowl right now. All right, let, let's do right. it. Hey, we might have to do this right now. Sure. Okay, uh-huh. put it like, down. Put dude. it down. Ping pong too, Trev. You got a ping pong table? Because I will whoop oh some ass in ping pong. Bro. God. Bro. And I won't even make you sit in a chair. I will whoop your... Where, where's I'll, the ping pong table around here? I'll hey, we'll go it. find one. Cool. We used to have one here. We, we don't have one. We used to have one here. I'll do it sitting down and left-handed. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used to have to play left-handed to everybody else oh, in this office. Listen. Listen. Hey. I, uh, I beat the, I beat the uh, Chinese kid in junior high school. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> I beat I beat that Jeff, you ain't, man, you junior ain't high. Doing this. You junior ain't high. Char, uh, Char Ming, Char Ming, Che Char. I, I got you, bro. Okay. Yeah, I like the, it. The, the Chinese dude didn't even want to play me. The, oh, really? Yeah. He just he was he's new. <laughs> he knew this guy's dangerous. He knew. Now I just get. Now I got that itch, we bro. Gotta say, like I got it. to. I now. pulled out the paddle, and he didn't want to get the spanking, bro. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, do you you got yeah. the double sided, the sticky kind of on the I'm one? Not gonna just, okay. I'm not going to. All right, hey, all right. <laughs> Some things are better left like unsaid, uh, right. dude. Uh, it, I'm, I'm not going to expose all my secrets we for gotta, you to take. Let's do this. We got to do this. We need to freaking do a whole Saturday. <laughs> this is this is where shit. it's good to compete, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. right, right, right. Dominate, yeah. not dominate. No, we don't compete. We dominate. Yeah, dominate. There we go. When you can't return my service, he's bitching about oh, that's not illegal service. That's exactly what everybody says. Yeah, this is a legal serve. I got spins on my. Oh, bro, I listen. You I'm guys got you spins on your bowling over ball? There. On your bowling? You got a spin on your bowling? Oh, yeah. My you ball, no. You hit that head but down? No. Opposite. Yeah. I don't, I don't you do go it under this twice. Way. I go this way. I can oh, do really? it both ways. Listen. <laughs> I never he, said it was going to be. I think his mouth writing checks his body can't I know, cash. No, I never said it was three hundred. Okay. I could do it both ways. Listen, I'm going. I'm a buck twenty, buck thirty. Dude. Ooh, okay. I'm seeing you I, on a Saturday. I, 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 <laughs> that might that might be something. Let's do it. We got. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, do but, it. But, but, it but today's first step. Yeah, uh, it's going to be um, the largest nonprofit. That's that's the goal. Um, getting some good backing from uh, uh, the city and from Intermountain, good. and and uh, going to allow us to. Get some land and some buildings, and and you gotta store this equipment and make a difference in people's lives. Good. Yeah, that's very that's cool, man. So, you guys, well, uh, you guys take do donations from the public and everything. Uh, we haven't Not done yet. an event yet, okay. and we're so you have to get up, set up, and you have to like have, have a vendor's license too, oh, and all that to accept all yeah. that stuff. I it's mean, we got the just like anything else. Yeah, we've got yeah, the five hundred one c three. We've yeah. got the whole the number and everything. We just don't. But anyway, yeah. we are uh, we're gonna change lives one person at a time. Good, and that's I love it, man. Well, I will tell you this. Calling, uh, That's it. I'll yeah. tell you this. You you changed more than one life at a time just showing up today and being on the podcast. Oh, thanks, bro. I guarantee it. Thanks. I guarantee you there's some people that are on the other end of uh, of, of this podcast and this show right now uh, going to course correct. Now, do I know if it's going to be 1,000 or 500? I know there's a handful of human beings that you've already you've already done that, right? Just you guys today. are badasses. So. You guys are doing the right thing. It's easy. I mean... Kale, thank you. And, and, and well, dude, thanks and for making us a pleasure, man. Look good by knowing great guys hey, like it's, you, it's, it's where you easy. come on it's and too, you look just at you drop. Guys, it's too you easy. Drop, yeah, dude. I do. <laughs> you know, so anyhow. I was stoked. I was yeah. stoked when you reached out, man. It's always awesome, especially because you're you're like a you're a local stud. You know what I mean? Right. Like thank we get, you. We thank get people you. from out of town. All these yeah. business networks we got around, they're all studs too. But like when we can be like, dude, we got a stud right here in our town. We can come in and just. Have a conversation, and then we can go bowling and yeah, yeah, take and our boys pong. next week or whatever. Ping pong, I guarantee. <laughs> I bowling, guarantee bowling. You. I don't know. I'll be about one, one hundred five, one hundred eight consistent. Yeah. Okay, so maybe a bowling, that you got me. We'll, but I'll be no, in your we'll, ear we'll though. We'll be head to head. Yeah, one twenties, one thirty. You know, I'm talking about my good game. <laughs> I'm highlighting my highs. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you know what I'm okay. 
You know, me, now, me breaking a hundred, I can do that. One five, one ten. Now you don't use the the roller thing with the with, no. the, with the lane. Does he use the lane <laughs> things? The dino, my, yeah, yeah, my the dino dinosaur with the, with the, yeah, the, kid, the, the blockers the kid thing. <laughs> hey, I can't put my spins on. It I like just got to make sure what I'm getting into. You know, we got to get the ground rules so I know yeah, what I'm going into. You don't, you don't want the smoke. So, <laughs> but it sounds like uh, you're going to get it one way or another. So, how do people connect with you, bro? How do, how do, uh, how do they go to my you? IG? Go to IG, which is Maddie Blanche three. Maddie Blanche three. Yep, Maddie M-A-T-T-Y. Blanche. Three. M-A-T-T-Y. 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 B-L-A-N-C-H and the number three. Okay. Yep. yep. Guys, reach out to him. Uh, first off, just reach out to him and say thank you for the show. Thank you for yeah. you know giving us his time and, and being so gracious with his story and all the lessons. Uh, because you know, I know I'm great for making. it. Yeah, 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 the difference right. that you're making in, in just in the world in general. So make sure you reach out to him if you have any questions, you have any concerns, you want him to shine some light on maybe a topic, uh, you know, changing your perspective. Yeah. You know, he's he's obviously a giver, a, an individual mm-hmm. here to serve, as you guys can tell. So uh, take advantage of that. Other than that, guys, make sure you share the episode with somebody that you love and care about because I think this is a course correction type episode, uh, you know, where individuals could really change their perspective. Uh, and usually that's really all you need to, to live a much better life. So share this with somebody that you care about. Other than that, kick ass and have a good week, guys. Thank you so very much.